Hello everybody, it's me Ghost Critic and I'm here with my monthly comic book review video. Every month I look back at the previous month's comics and pick out my top five favourite comic books and I let you know why they were my favourites. Um, I have this nice big stack of comics that I had to go through again and again and again. It was quite a tough one this, um, this month to pick out five jewels of June. Yes, it's just been June. Um, but it was all great stuff, hence why it took me so long to pick my top five favourites. I'll also be telling you about five other comics that I think you should be reading. Didn't quite have that 100% sparkle, but nevertheless really good reads. So, without further ado, let's crack on with the first book. My first top five pick of June is Department H, issue number three, our murder mystery at the bottom of the ocean. Um, last issue we saw Mia being attacked by this kind of huge tentacled octopus type thing um, and everything looked really bad. Um, she was basically plummeting to the depths of the ocean bed and while Mia at the start of this is rescued, unfortunately her brother who went along wasn't so fortunate and he's still out there somewhere. Um, but before a rescue attempt can be made, all hell breaks loose in the underwater complex, this Department H, where a virus has broken out in one of the labs that is housing Jerome, who seems to have gone completely insane um, and he's opening up locks to allow all the kind of ocean water to come in it's action all the way it's danger it's kind of high stakes time has to be done things have to be put to one side it's one of those books where it barely lets you breathe for a second just as that moment where you think oh I can take a breather here now I can take everything I've just read and looked at in and then all oh, again Matt Kent is there with the action he's there with the tension such such a good book um, it's like the book goes from disaster to crisis to disaster to crisis um, this book seriously demands multiple readings if only to make sure you've you know, picked up everything that is going on. Matt Kint has already said in the very first issue that there are clues, clues everywhere to who is the actual murderer of Mia's father that we found out about right at the very beginning of this uh, title. Um, so for that alone, it makes great value um, for picking up this for its multiple reading. Of course, we have that great signature Matt Kint art style, the kind of rough, sketchy, but completely full of creativity and imagination. It really is a must for all big independent comic book readers. And if you're one of those guys or girls who uh, only stick to the big two, Marvel and DC, give this book a try. It's got a really strong story. It's got all lots of great individual characters. And the artwork, it will just open doors for you into other areas of comic books that you may not necessarily be used to, but would and should enjoy just as much. We move on to Clean Room, issue nine, with Gail Simone continuing her story of body horror mixed with kind of religious theology as at the end again of last issue, Killian, Chloe and Astrid are locked in the clean room uh, where this supposedly good demon um, has the opportunity to save Astrid's life after being shot um, with uh, some fatality. And it's just, uh, Simone does this great thing of cranking up the tension with every page. Um, you just really don't know until the last page kind of which way it's going to be. Will Astrid's life be saved? Will her whole mindset and her kind of mission however dark it may seem will it change because of the events from this book 
And when you couple that with John Davis uh, Hunt's artwork and his amazing attention to detail here, what you have here is a great, fantastic kind of old school vertigo horror book, which I just adore. I lap up. It's got that kind of Hellblazer Constantine feel to it. You know, it's dealing with the supernatural. It's got all these demons in. You've got kind of a backstory going on with one of the huge companies uh, who apparently well they do seem to be starting to get involved um, in the, the whole makeup of this story and then Gail Simone throws in all this history um, all this stuff that's happened in the past Astrid's kind of where she came from from having right at the very beginning of this issue being run over by a car and, and basically being reversed over again and to then being able to see all these demons and um, what appears to be her mission in in destroying them. Um, Gail Simone certainly keeps you on your toes with this book. Such another great, exciting read that I just, this makes it almost to the top of my pile every time it comes out. Uh, Vertigo really bringing back some great stories uh, and titles from a time where we thought Vertigo was really going to go the way of so many other kind of imprints within imprints um, of, of DC uh, and we just thought it, how long has it got to go and then it brought out all these great books so definitely Gail Simone and John Davis Hunt's clean room if you're into that whole horror psychological feel of a book then this for you we make our way with our third book of my top five with the sci-fi feel this time. It is Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nugent's Descender, issue number 12. And we have Tim 21 fighting for his life against Tim 22. And I guess robots do get a little bit jealous um, as we have Tim 22 trying to um, put down Tim 21 and make sure he is the, the rightful son of this kind of robot leader, Sias. And, uh, but before we get to see this, the start of this, this fight between these two robot kids, uh, we, we find out how Tim 22 has become this, for want of a better phrase, kind of a bad seed. Um, he is unwanted by his original owner. Um, he is given to the father of a son who basically doesn't want to look after his own father. So he gives Tim 22 the job of looking after his dad, but his dad is very much against robots and technology. He's kind of very, very old school and he mistreats Tim 22. He locks him away in the cupboard. He basically just does his best to ignore uh, this, this robot child. And then just after the kind of robot invasion that kind of blows up all the cities, uh, we have poor Tim 22 being hunted by humans um, for for parts and such and just basically because these humans are not very nice people and Tim 22 ends up killing uh, the father of these bunch of kids that are, are basically bullying him and so he has to then go on the run he's hunted and, and kind of trying to avoid the scrappers in the streets and it is at this point where Sias picks him up and rescues him to the point where he no longer has to run and he has this home. Um, once again the art by Dustin to Nugent just appeals to me so much. This, I love the, just this kind of painted effect on canvas look and feel that this book has and it doesn't look like any of the sci-fi series I've seen in the past and I just think that gives it that extra specialness um, that makes me enjoy reading Descender as, as a sci-fi genre title all the more. So another great book from Image coming out back to um, back to regularly monthly coming out so look forward to another issue of Descender. Penultimate book of my top five favourites of June it is uh, The Return it came back in June it's Paper Girls issue six issue seven is already out and it was pretty shocking but let's talk about issue number six uh, where Brian K Vaughan returned with this great character piece uh, of an issue uh, and what a fantastic return it was 
Uh, we have the girls from the 80s having somehow been transported to our present time and we have them meet up with Erin's older self. One of the paper girls meets herself in the future and it's... Erin hasn't exactly turned out the way she thought she would have expected to um, and her life does seem to be very much of a mess. Um, there is a great deal of humour in this book which I love uh, and it comes mostly yes from the clash of cultures um, the children being brought up in the 80s. Um, I kind of guess uh, the dawn of a lot of the start of technological advances which has accu uh, accumulated to where we are now and we have kind of Erin and her, her young friends being so um, frustrated by smart cars and how small they are, how amazing smartphones are, the size of her TV and all these channels. It, it, it is humorous, it is funny uh, and while that has been done before it's done with um, it's done with such innocence uh, and and care and love that you can't help be kind of warmed by these girls uh, it, uh, emotions and feelings about or what what the future has um, in store for them. Uh, <clears throat> there's not only that, there is of course danger going on outside of, of these four girls. Um, things are still pretty screwy where we see yet another appearance of what may be yet another Erin coming what much, much looks like the future this time, the future of our time. <clears throat> uh, and there's kind of lightning and there's thunderstorms and um, uh, much danger going all around uh, and I have to say there's got to be a certain amount of hats off to Matt Wilson the colorist of Cliff Chang's great artwork in here um, it's just a great all-round package um, from from Brian K Vaughan who we know has done such great stuff in the past like Why the Last Man and obviously currently Saga um, but this is, is something very different to I guess both of those titles and just shows Brian K. Vaughan's versatility and great storytelling and kind of prowess and just a great book uh, and it's nice to see kind of uh, a predominantly all-female cast uh, where while I might have just brought that up you don't actually realise that while you're reading it there's there's very few male influences bar the writer obviously um, in this book and I just think it it does so well in that that you are just there for the story and the visuals and however crazy and whatever the hell's going on in the background you you are invested in these characters and I just love it for that and um, as I said if you've read issue 7 already there was a bit of a punch to the guts at the end of that title too Okay, before we make it to my top favourite book of June, just going to ch quickly chat about five other books that I think need your attention. And I'm kicking off with Black Widow issue number four. I've said in previous videos on my pull list videos of a Wednesday, I kind of left it till this particular issue to decide whether this was going to be on my pull list. It was staying just on the shelves I was picking it up off there. But with this issue, I think, yes, it is. It's now on my pull list as Wade and Samney have been giving us this kind of origin story, I guess, of Black Widow. I'm not uh, particularly well versed in the Black Widow history, uh, but Wade seems to be giving us somewhat of an origin story where she obtained all her kind of spy skills and we keep getting these um, gorgeous flashbacks to it. I'd say yes this is a great book if you're a new reader to Black Widow. Um, we have the future storyline going on coupled with as I said these flashbacks to her history and her training to become a Black Widow. We get a surprise villain that's surely going to crop up as this series continues and I hope it does. Um, another great um, um, team of Wade and Samney bringing what is lit, what is generally known as a kind of B or C lister character despite the movie's efforts um, to, to bring her to the fore. Certainly in the comic book she has been not so much an A lister um, but like I said Wade and Samney doing their darndest um, to, to bring light to a, a really great but complex character. 
Um, I have to have this on. It could make my top five every, every month, um, but I don't think that's fair on all the other books, but I've got to mention it. It is, of course, uh, Doctor Strange, Aaron and Bacello with help from uh, Townsend on this book. Um, this is the penultimate chapter of The Last Days of Magic. It's been all pretty dark from, from the beginning, and this issue is certainly no exception. We have all these kind of people flocking to the temple where we've seen uh, the, the Tibetans being trained to take a lot of the pain um, for, away from Doctor Strange so he can be he cannot be beaten in the battles. They kind of take on um, the pain and the anguish and, and strengthen him to, to become um, the winner of his, his magical battle, battles. Um, and, and so we have now these just general public people are about to do just the same. Um, we have the Doctor Strange doing his kind of magical Indiana Jones bit, collecting all the uh, remaining magical articles to go and fight the Empirical. And talking about the Empirical, well, they've discovered what's in the well. And it's another deep, dark secret from Doctor Strange's past, which is bound to cause him trouble in future storylines. Again, my favourite artist, Picello, just does some great work on this. I love the style. It fits this book so, so well. I hope he's on it for uh, much more to come, but Still, if Aaron's writing this, he's got a hold on this character. He's got a really intriguing uh, and compelling storyline that I want to read issue after issue. This goes to the top every time. Uh, <clears throat> moving on to Wonder Woman, The Rebirth, issue number one. This is the true start. This isn't the one shot. This is the first issue of the ongoing series um, from Rucker, Sharp and Martin. I've said in previous videos, Wonder Woman, I've never picked up um, a single ongoing uh, title ever. So I thought this would be a good start. I read the one shot. I was intrigued at this concept of um, all of her origins have been very different just depending on who has written her. Um, and now she's out looking for the truth. And this has kind of led her to Africa, this, this rainforest. And we see her seeking out the truth of her origin. She wants to know kind of her roots and where she's come from. And this book certainly shows off the, the main characteristics of Wonder Woman. You know, her agility, her strength, her perseverance. And she's out there looking for help. And it, she's seeking it in a most unusual place. And by the end of this issue, you find out it's Cheetah. Um, Cheetah is basically her arch enemy, much like Joker is to the Batman and uh, Lex Luthor is to Superman. This is uh, kind of big baddie, the numero uno. So it'll be interesting to see how these two play off each other. However, although this is meant to come out every two weeks, um, apparently issue two still hasn't come out yet, so it's already fallen behind in solicitations. But what they're doing is um, they're doing kind of like alternate issues where the next issue is going to be her in the past. Interesting. And then they'll jump back to continuing this storyline. Um, I think that's how they're getting around because it'll probably be a very different style of uh, of art style in, in both issue storylines um, but still I really enjoyed it had some great action um, some just some great artwork bit photoshoppy for my taste but um, still fun to read um, I hate Fairyland, Scotty Young. I thought this was done, but no, he's back again, and it is hilarious. One of the funniest comic books you could ever read at the moment. Uh, Gertrude is now the queen of Fairyland after the end of the last mini storyline, um, but it's not as great and as fun as she expected. It's just more over-the-top cartoon violence, explosions, gut being ripped apart but done in this kind of babyish cartoony way that you can't help but fall in love with. Um, bright, colourful, uh, not one to show the kids, it really isn't, but full of adult humour and doesn't fall into that trap of using swear words to get that across. Brilliant, a uh, welcome, welcome return. Love this book. Finally for my um, just 
remember about these issues. Uh, issue number three of <coughs> House of Penance, continuing its Lovecraftian tale of inner demons and real life conflicts as uh, Mr. Peck and Sarah Winchester grow closer, but uh, not in the way, uh, not in a healthy way, let's put it that way. Um, Ian Bertram's art, Dave Stewart's colours, just make every single page of this book pop. It is another kind of horror title. I'm very much into my horror books at the moment, uh, and this just fits the bill. Uh, very creepy, very kind of supernaturally demony, and just uh, another kind of all rounder great horror title. Um, that if you are really into that kind of thing, this will be for you. We come to the number one book of June for me. It was my favourite and without doubt, hands down, it was Deadly Class issue number 21, the finale, the final part of Die For Me, this kind of a battle royale end of year assessment where you basically have to kill everyone to survive and go into your second year. And Remender hates us. He must hate us, why? Well, he makes us care about the most despicable characters. And then we end up wanting these kind of child assassins to live, to kill another day. It's messed up. Um, God, what do we have here? This is one roller coaster of a book. And by the end of it, um, you are just speechless. Um, Petra and Billy, they're hiding out and they're sharing their kind of past and why they have become who they have come. Uh, and and, it, and it's grim stuff. It, it, it's grim, grim, dark stuff. Um, we've got Marcus and Willie with a kind of showdown on the roof. Um, Kendall and Stephen break up with kind of terminal finality and nothing ends as you expect it to. Just as you think, yes, they're going to escape. Yes, these people have bonded. Yes, their love is going to be stronger than ever. Remender twists the knife quite literally and you are completely and utterly exhausted, but at the same time exhilarated by this tissue. Um, you don't know who's made it at the end of this. There are some obvious ones that we are not going to see. Uh, by the end of this title, you kind of felt, well, was that the last issue? But um, Remender has certainly said this is coming back in September for its kind of sophomore year, and you wonder, uh, what next as he said you know it's going to introduce new characters into the first year but given who has ever survived from this series um, what is their take going to be on these kind of newbies these rookies coming in are they going to warn them are they going to just leave them be and make their own mistakes just like this one like this group of guys did um, but it has just been absolutely fantastic from the start to the end top-notch book remember craig and boyd have done a phenomenal job on this book and i would recommend this hands down above any book out right now that's that's some recommendation. So thank you very much for watching my Jewels of June, my top five favourite books. I hope you agreed with at least some of them. Let me know what your favourite books were from last month or just in general what you're reading. Let me know in the comments section down below. If you liked what you just saw, hit the subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up and I'll see you with more favourite comic books at the end of next month. Uh, sorry, at the end of this month, because it's now July. And I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.